Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Plugged. I'm excited that... Did I say plugged yeah. again? <laughs> All right, just keep rolling, Matt. This is NCC Unplugged. I have no. I see unplugged in my head, and I say plugged for some reason. <sighs> However you joined us, we appreciate it. We're thankful that you are a listener of ours, if this is your first time. My name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister here at Norwin Christian Church, and I'm sitting down with Jonathan Slat, our youth minister. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So Jonathan and I are going to have a conversation about youth ministry. One of our ministries here in the church, uh, we have many different ministries, but youth ministry is by and large uh, one of our our, our largest ministries in terms of participation, um, the support that the church gives. And so just wanted to to highlight this ministry. And as we go through this podcast, I know there'll be other ministries that we we talk about, Mm. things we do here at the uh, church. So Jonathan, why don't you give us a little background? How long have you been our youth minister? How did you get excited about youth ministry, all those things? Sure. So I guess how long I've been the youth minister depends on how you define me being the youth minister. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you go by when I was part-time, then I've been here for about two years and two years and two months um, because I started January of, or I'm sorry, started December of 2021. Okay. The middle school Christmas party was my first day as youth minister. Um, But then as I was finishing school, I was part-time Went full-time when I graduated in May of 22, and I've been full-time since then. So, Yeah, and before all of that, Jonathan was our intern for a bit for youth ministry. That's true. 2018, my senior year, um, I would leave for the back half of my senior year, I would leave school early to come here and be an intern, which was awesome. Like, what more could I want? Yeah, and who, and who was your boss during those days? You were. That's right. I mean, talk about a work environment. Oh my, it was. I mean, it couldn't get any better. It than could that. not. It could. So not. maybe you don't know, but I as I was b- before preaching minister, I was the youth minister uh, for nine years. Mm-hmm. So Jonathan was one of my interns during that time, and I remember that time when you're uh, intern. I remember hearing you talk about your senior year in. Jonathan was already playing a big role in the youth ministry before his internship and playing worship for the bridge service that we do and, and different things that maybe Jonathan will talk about here in a little bit. Um, and I remember hearing that, like, oh, you, you're getting to leave school early, you're going to get a job, and I think you were at Subway, right? I was at Subway. I was. I, I was I, a sandwich artist. And I think, it, uh, okay, <laughs> that sounds fancy. <laughs> That's what they call it. And I remember talking to the elders and maybe some of the staff members, I was like, but I don't want I don't want to lose Jonathan to Subway. And I was like, can we do some something? You know, we we've had interns before. Would it be out of the possibility of doing an internship during the school year? And so it's neat we were able to have you during mm-hmm. that time. How how long were you a intern? Was it six months? I think it was six. It would have been about six months. You, yeah, you didn't do it through the summer. No, because you want we do a lot of events over the summer, and so you wanted to participate in those things as a student. Mm-hmm not as an intern. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're able to finish off your senior year doing that. Right, yeah. Um, So going back to the question before, before I rudely interrupted, No. what what was your heart and passion behind pursuing youth ministry? Tell us a little bit about your story there. Well, it's it's a weird question. It's like, where does it start? Like, how Mm. far do you go back? Um, Because I I wouldn't have even started where you started, but I guess I should, is in high school – I was doing a lot of different things, like a lot of volunteering things, um, where most of it was worship because that's kind of where I was naturally gifted. I'd played piano and guitar for a long time. I would say I really started getting involved probably, I don't even remember what year it was, but um, the, we had a youth, men, youth worship leader. His name was Troy Coates. He's an awesome guy. Um, but he led the band and I was a part of it. And then when he graduated... I kind of stepped into that role, um, having not really known how to play guitar, definitely didn't know how to sing, um, but jumped into it. I liked the aspects of leading and being able to use those gifts. Um, and then from there, it kind of went into being a counselor at Camp Christian with the middle school week um, and just kind of getting involved in different areas. Uh, like we had a student leadership group that I was a part of. 
um, just really any way I could get involved, I wanted to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, in high school, I didn't really do anything that was associated with the school. Like I didn't do any sports. I was I was in marching band for two weeks. Um, I almost passed out the one day <laughs> that I was so. I got out of that pretty quick. Um, so like everything I did was really here. Mm. Um, and all my friends were here. All my opportunities for leadership or service or volunteering were here. Um, and I think that's where my heart was kind of built for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then on, on graduating high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I think I maybe had some ideas, but so I went to community college, which I highly recommend anyone who's graduating to do. Um, Took a couple years to, I got a degree in graphic design. Um, Matt really appreciated that. Thank you, Matt. Um, kind of figured out what I wanted to do and then found that I really liked psychology and was kind of getting away from ministry for a while. I don't know if I was intentionally saying I don't want to be in ministry or if it was just I, I was going a different way. Because um, I, I tell Natalie, like she was with me through this whole process. We've been together for a long time. Um, and I never felt like I was denying ministry. Like I truly felt like for several years, I was passionate about counseling and therapy and psychology. And I went to um, finish my bachelor's in psychology and I was totally set on um, going into graduate school, whether it was for um, clinical psychology or mental health counseling or um, something in that field of psychology. And I found that when I look back on it, I could see God softening my heart to get back to ministry. And it, it kind of started when I got this job at a mental health facility. It was a, I was just a receptionist, so I wasn't like counseling or anything. But I got to see the day-to-day -day of what I was about to get into. And I wanted to become like a doctor, a clinical psychologist. But then being there and seeing what a clinical psychologist does, I was like, oh, well, this isn't really what I thought it was. This mm -hmm. isn't for me. I'm glad I didn't spend five years in graduate school doing yeah. this. So um, from there I said, okay, well, I, I really like the therapy part of it. So I'm going to go into therapy. So then the plan changed from, okay, I'm not going to be a doctor, but I want to be that master level um, therapist, master's degree level therapist. Um, so again, I had, I had plans for that. Natalie and I went to the college library and mapped out the next five years of our life on a whiteboard um, I made a PowerPoint about it to tell you, our families. You like your whiteboards. I love whiteboards. I really do. Uh, they're great. And um, so we mapped that all out with, I was going to be in Virginia for this many years. We were going to get married here, do this, do this. Um, and then something, I don't remember what happened. I just remember feeling this way that I felt that I would needed to go into faith-based counseling because otherwise I'd be limited, right? Like if I can't, openly speak about the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to help people the way that God wants me to. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, Terry, who was the senior minister here at the time, left and went to his home church, which is an oversimplification, but mm -hmm. um, you stepped up into that position. So then the youth minister position was open mm -hmm. and not stepped up like Promotes just stepped right, up right, right. in age. <laughs> I became a real minister. You became a real minister. Yeah, he wears collared shirts and stuff like that. Jonathan just has a t-shirt on right now. Yep. Right. Oh yes, I am repping the um, Norwin Youth t-shirts. There you go. By the way, love, love God, God, love, love others. others. Yeah, the back's really cool too. But you you'll have to see it on Sunday because I, mean, I could show it. Should I show it? Show the back. The back. Oh, if you're is if, it weird if too? You're listening to this on video. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So maybe we could talk about the back, but it has some meaning. Uh, but this was designed by one of our students, and um, I'm repping the orange today because I think we have an orange one and a blue one, and the orange one doesn't get enough love, I think. So I've, I've got the orange one on today. Nice. But um, what was I talking about? So this position opened up, and I kind of – I was with Natalie at college at the time, and I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Like, wouldn't that be fun if I stepped into that position, but never really considered it? And then – over the next several months, God was softening my heart. Like you had me preach here mm -hmm. the one day um, in, in July. And I remember I stood on the stage and I said to everybody, if you need a sign to follow Jesus's calling for your life, this is your sign. Like I'm telling you right now, turn around, repent, follow Jesus's calling for your life. And then 
kind of thinking on that after I said it. I was like, I really need to follow my own advice yeah. there. And I went to Natalie and I said, um, you know, do, like, I'm kind of thinking about this. Do you think we could make this work? Like, what do you think about this? And she's like, you've been talking about this for like the last several months. Mm-hmm. She's like, you, this is what you want to do. This is what God wants you to do. I was like, okay. So, you know, I prayed about it, went for the position and went through a interview, interview process here. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, it was awesome. And now here I am. Yeah. You said something interesting that I've found myself saying something very similar. Like you said, God softened your heart to it. Mm -hmm. And when people would ask me, oh, Jeff, do you you miss youth ministry activities? Do you miss miss being with the youth? My answer was always yes. I I miss that aspect of things. But then as I got further away from it, I always respond with, I think God was working in my heart more than I realized. Mm -hmm. And you kind of used similar language with God was softening your heart. And that's easy to look back on in the past yeah. because in the moment you don't see that. In the mm-hmm. moment you don't see, oh, my heart is shifting in this way or I'm feeling a tug to uh, maybe do a different type of event or a different program or I feel led to do this. Um, those can just be things I don't know you find yourself doing, but once you have the opportunity to look back on those things, you realize the growth and the process mm-hmm. that it took you to get there and for you is all those different events leading up. And, um, and it's like, I mean, I think all all those steps still feel like they were necessary. Mm. Yeah. Like if I had, if, if the just job had opened up when I was in the first part where I wanted to be in clinical psychology, it would have been a hard no. Mm -hmm. Cause I truly thought like, this is where my gifts are. This is where God wants me to serve. But the things that I learned from pursuing the different paths, Mm -hmm are things that I use in this job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I get to counsel people or talk to people and, you know, th- things that I'll use in teaching, like there's, there was so much truth and wisdom that God gave me along the way that I still use. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when we listen to God, it is a journey. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that journey isn't a straight path because we do need to learn things and pick up things along the way. And even as as you're interacting with students, as you're, you know, we've talked about opportunities for you to preach coming up, you still have that psychology background and all mm-hmm. the education in that field to use for those things. So that's really important. So when you think of youth ministry now, mm-hmm. where do you see youth ministry in the bigger picture of the church? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's different philosophies of youth ministry. There's different theories of how the ministries play in within the church. Um, what are your thoughts on all of that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I'm, it, it's definitely formed over the last two years mm-hmm. for sure. And I'm still, I think, discovering the role of that mm-hmm. and where youth ministry fits in with the church. Um, but one thing that I've held to that uh, you held to um, was that the youth are not the future of the church. They're the church now. Mm-hmm. So this, this heart of equipping them to do God's work where they are and not, okay, when you graduate, you can do this. When you're in high school, you can do this. When you right. are 18, you know. But no, you you can serve right now, you know, mm-hmm. and we, we have service opportunities, um, teaching them to own their faith, right? Like, you know, y- yes, you're with your parents and you should listen to your parents and understand what they're teaching you, but you have to own your faith. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to make the decision to follow Jesus. And it's not that you'd have to do it when you don't have your parents around or when you go to college or when you go to work. But it's it's right now, you know. We're all children of God. As far as God's concerned, the difference in age between us is pretty negligible. Mm-hmm. You know, God is eternal. You know, seventy years is nothing, right? So, as children of God, we're we're all in that place. We all rely on Him. You do have to own your faith at that age. So, I think, it, it, to me, it's almost felt recently like youth ministry feels like a small group, mm-hmm. where it's you know we are a smaller part of the larger church that is growing together and learning together and, and getting closer to God. Um, and it's, you know, it's not so much that you show up and I talk for half an hour and you listen to me and I, you know, it's not classroom style. Um, and that was something I struggled with at the beginning was what does this look like? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's a different thing. Cause it's not preaching. It's not teaching like a classroom. It's not just a small group. Like it's, it's different. Yeah. Um, but it has those aspects of discovery, right? Like we're, we're discovering God together. Mm. Um, like you said, it's this, 
it's this journey that won't be a straight line. But mm-hmm. yeah, let the church know. So bust the myth a little bit that youth ministry is just playing games with kids. <laughs> youth ministry is 60% playing games <laughs> with kids. And then, <laughs> no, um, it's, yeah, it's not just playing games, right? Like I don't just sit in my office and come up with new games to play. I do sometimes, mm-hmm. like when we're getting ready for camp or I need to be creative with how we're going to do this. I will devote time to it. Um, but the games serve a larger purpose in the ministry mm-hmm. and it's not just busy work and it's not just um, something to do to burn some energy before we go and, and have a lesson, right? I mean, these, the, and this was something I didn't realize right off the bat because um, I really didn't want to fall into that stereotype. Mm-hmm. Of like all they do is play games, especially as like a younger guy without a beard at, t- at the time. <laughs> um, I didn't want people to be like, oh, all he does is play games, doesn't take this seriously. So I wouldn't put a lot of thought into the game. Like I'd say, okay, whatever, we'll play soccer for 20 minutes and then Mm -hmm. go into the lesson. I don't really care how it happens. Um, But then as as I went kind of understanding, well, no, the the game is a big part of the night, Mm -hmm. right? When we have youth group, we got to break the ice, right? We have a lot of students that know each other and they are friends. But we also have students that, you know, they're coming from all sorts of different schools. They might not know each other. Maybe they see each other once a week at church. And the game really serves as a way to like, we're all in this together. We're going to do something ridiculous and break down some walls before we get into growing together. Um, and it's really kind of like that that team building, which sounds cliche, but like building relationships type mm-hmm. thing. And if you look at our process, to me, that's the come part of come connect grow go is Mm -hmm. you come and play a game or play frisbee or soccer or maybe something more ridiculous but you know it's it's part of icebreaker yeah yeah and our church pulls from so many different school districts and Mm -hmm. so for a lot of kids this is the one time for them to be together in their church family Mm -hmm. and so things like that can be like you said unity and bring kids together for a little bit Mm -hmm. um do you have a verse or a Bible passage that you maybe in the the days when things aren't going good in youth ministry mm. that you look to to inspire you and to encourage you? Absolutely. Um, I think this the passage that I go back to the most and that really inspires me is the story of the woman at the well, mm. um, because I think that really embodies what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like our mission statement in the youth ministry is to provide a place for students to get closer to God, follow the Holy Spirit, and find their place in the body of Christ. And the story of this woman who didn't know Jesus, she was just coming to the well to get something she was always doing, Mm -hmm. and then had this encounter with Jesus and followed him because of it. Like we have an awesome room downstairs, right? We've got great, you know, we play fun games. We've got good snacks down there. We might have students that are coming just because their friends are here, right? And you come just to come. Mm -hmm. But then while you're here, we want you to have an encounter with Jesus. Mm. And and she's just, I just love that aspect of it. She didn't expect anything. I mean, she was just, if anything, she probably expected to be disappointed and hot because she was out there in the middle of the day. She was just going about her life. But when she left, she left that pot there and went back and told others about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, that's such an important process of our spiritual growth um, process. It's, it's such an important part of what we do in the youth ministry. So that passage definitely inspires me um, for sure. Was there one that inspired you when you were starting out or one that inspires you now in preaching? Yeah, it's interesting. So during that transition time uh, between youth ministry and preaching, um, there's Rob Grandy was was in charge of the preaching schedule, and Joshua and I and Rob were were sharing a lot of the preaching duties. And so I I had done sermons before as the youth minister. Um, in fact, I had done one sermon series. I think it was three or four weeks long. And um, but then that was the start to definitely preach more often. And one of the series is series is series series series. Yeah, series. Yep. Uh, we did was on Colossians, and so my goal through that series, even though I wasn't preaching every week, I tried to read through the book of Colossians every every single week, mm. just to get it in my head and, and grasp it. And so this stuck out uh, from Colossians chapter one, verse twenty eight. 
He, meaning Jesus, is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And so in my head, and I don't know if this image is right, (laughs) but in my head as preacher, um, he says we do this so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. I just had this picture of um, being held accountable for the flock Mm. and, you know, ushering everybody in fully mature and say, yep, I taught them this. Yes, we we looked at Scripture this way. Yes, they're ready. And um, that's kind of what I go back to often is, you know, as I plan things, as we do things as a church, outside sermon series and, and sermons as well, you know, when we have worship nights or what the direction for our church is, what's our one-year goal, different things. Is this leading to greater maturity for mm-hmm. for our church? Um, so that's something that really inspires me. I also marked uh, my inspiring verse in youth ministry, and I use this different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, at the first church I worked at in Florida, we... I painted it up on the wall and came up with acronyms for different things. We like youth ministers love acronyms for different things. Some like, of them, some of them do. I'm gonna yeah. guess that's not you probably know. not the newer ones. Okay. No. Uh, First Timothy four. <laughs> are, you, are you saying I'm an old? No, no I, I don't know. I, I don't know what okay. I meant. That's right. First uh, Timothy four. Uh, we'll start in verse twelve. It says, "Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in love, and faith, and in purity." So Paul was writing to Timothy, this young guy, this young leader in the church, and saying, well, I guess the aspect I love to that verse is it doesn't say prove them wrong by your, mm. you know, your knowledge of all these things or uh, by not wearing T-shirts that are wrinkled. But uh, <laughs> he says, set an example for them. Like, just just show up and do it. You know, sh- show them that whatever accusation they have against you isn't true because of the way you've been living your life Mm. and your speech and your love that you have for others. So Mm. that was kind of always motivating to um, give out to students, you know, when, hey, there might be some really well-meaning adults in your life. There might be some really well-meaning adults in the church that, oh, well, the kids can't do this, or I'm not quite sure we can hand that responsibility over to a high schooler. Um, Okay, take that, but then show them with your love and your purity mm. and your actions, that that's just not true. Yeah. Because um, sometimes I think, I, I remember as a teenager, like, you just want to fight back. Mm. You just want to be like, you're not right. No, that's not true. Right. I could do this. Let me show you. And I think Paul's just encouraging Timothy uh, just to, to show up in his actions yeah. and stuff like that. So for those those listening, Jonathan, what else, what else uh, would you give them as far as this is what the youth ministry at Norwegian mm. Christian Church is about? Yeah. For sure. Before I do that, though, I want to speak to kind of what you just said, mm-hmm. just real quick about our church. Is I'm so thankful and grateful how little, if at all, we ever experience that sort of resistance. Mm-hmm. I mean, for sure, people at this church are so willing to let the students into their spaces and into these volunteer spaces, and I mean, they love Generation Sunday. People love to see the youth serving they yeah. and not even just to appease them it's not like okay you can go do this because it's not really that important like they have them involved in mm-hmm. the things that need done to help this church run and um just so grateful for their everybody who's who does that and supports the youth yeah, ministry for sure would you say cuz i i wholeheartedly agree with that would you mm-hmm. say we have a teenager or we're at least open to having teenagers in every aspect of our church absolutely i mean absolutely. from our children's ministry programs to, I mean, we have some of the high schoolers do communion meditations Mm -hmm. to our welcoming team, our hospitality team. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've never encountered a ministry leader that said something was too important for a high schooler or for a middle schooler. Um, You know, are there spaces that might be like, I don't know how to put it, um, like in a counseling situation or, or something like that, mm-hmm. there's there's different things, but there's nobody even in those situations that isn't ready to help equip yeah. a youth to to do those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that they look out for e- each other as well is is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Yeah. Anything else to share? Yes, what it was. I was say I remember I sidebarred there. Come back to it. Come back to it. Um, 
Could you ask the question again? <laughs> so for those listening, what what else about youth ministry here at NCC do you want mm. people to know? Any other myths to bust about youth ministry or just just how we do things here at NCC when it comes to youth ministry? Yeah. I mean, I think it's easy to see something like a CIY trip, like one of our bigger trips that definitely costs a lot more money. It's a bigger chunk of our budget and, and say, well, why aren't we able to replicate that here? Or why can't we do something like that? Not that anyone's ever said this, but it's I think it's one of those myths of, you know, these big events that are just kind of lip service or, mm. or just flashy. Um, but really when we go on these retreats and, and these trips, we do a lot of them over the year. Um, the students come back changed. Mm. Um, they come back with different outlooks on life, different things in their hearts. God works on them. And sometimes it takes, you know, being away somewhere where they're away from what they're normally responsible for, what's normally kind of plaguing their lives and they're able to focus in on God for a full weekend or a full week. Um, and those events are just such a crucial part of youth ministry, um, getting together, having a shared experience. Um, and what, what I really love to try to do is get the students to connect with each other because I love connecting with them and I love talking about things and help, helping them work through problems. But ultimately they are gonna graduate and I will absolutely still answer calls and, and mm -hmm. texts, but for them to be connected with someone who's in it with them is so crucial and someone who's going through the same thing, someone they can trust who also loves Jesus that is going to help them help them get through that. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, students do have to graduate. I've tried to stop it. But. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure their parents have tried to stop it too. Right. They want to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a huge team behind you. Absolutely. Um, you have some great volunteers that were there when I was there, mm. you have some new volunteers that are learning the ropes, and man, that's so important in youth ministry. Mm. One thing that I heard a while ago of, of, of switching the ratio, not having five kids to one adult, but having five adults mm. to one kid. And man, as a parent, to know that there's other loving adults mm. caring for my child and teaching my child the things that I'm teaching at home is so important. Absolutely. Um, and so... You know, just a shout out to oh my those goodness. youth ministry volunteers. They do so much. I mean, they're they're so relational mm -hmm. and so just everything. I mean, they're willing. They're so willing, right? They're so willing to do whatever I ask of them, and ultimately whatever whatever God asks of them mm -hmm. in this space. Um, and they make connections with the students. And there's you know, there's always personalities that it's like they just don't clash sometimes, but. We have so many adults that everybody has someone to connect mm -hmm. with and who can understand them. And like, you know, I don't get being like the popular guy, right? From in high school, but. Cause you I, passed out at band camp and couldn't even make that. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I didn't even fit in with, <laughs> with band camp um, or, you know, I was never super into sports or anything, but you know, so it's sometimes it's harder for me to mm -hmm. make a deeper connection with those students, but we have other volunteers that, they were all about that. And mm -hmm. they're like, they can talk to them and they understand the challenges that come with that and how their faith works in with that. And, um, the, you know, having people with different life perspectives that are able to teach and lead is just, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. So Jonathan, one of the bigger programs <laughs> that you do in youth ministry is called the bridge. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the bridge. So the bridge, the bridge service, I guess is the yeah. longer name. Uh, might have actually been my first experience with the youth ministry mm -hmm. here when you did it. Mm -hmm. um, so the bridge was something that was started, obviously it was my first experience a long time ago. Um, and it's a service specifically designed for middle school students and their parents to attend together. Okay. Um, and it's it's a more intimate service. It's smaller. Um, it's we the youth praise band leads the worship. So it's more of an acoustic um set list. But the idea of it is that middle school is this time of rapidly changing parent-child dynamics. Mm -hmm. you know, um, middle school students are really starting to find, figure out who they are. They're trying to find their identity in different things and, and they're gaining more autonomy. Um, you know, psychologically, they're developing into really who they're going to be as an adult. Mm -hmm. 
you know, up until that point, there's a lot more reliance on the parents. There's a lot more, um, there's a lot less disagreeing with everything they say. Um, it's just changing, right? And it can be tough to navigate. So to have a space where students and parents can come, maybe set aside some of the di- difficulties they've had during the week and learn about God together, yeah. right? Because, you know, parents have difficulties. It's like, I just feel like I d- don't understand them. And students are like, yeah, you don't understand me, right? You know, there's, it's right. This, this challenging thing. And so um, you're trying to bridge that exactly. gap uh, here at church. So that happens first Sunday of the month, 845 mm-hmm. every month. Except for the summer. We'll except it, for um, March and April, it's going to be the second Sunday. Of, March and April, you're mixing it up a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, other regular programs give a little bit of a commercial for that. Times, Absolutely. dates, all that. So we have these nice cards that Lilac the Squirrel is holding with our um, night events. And what those are, on Sunday nights, we have um, youth group for high school, and that's mm-hmm. ninth through 12th grade. 6 to 7.30 is what we have the program for, but people always stay till later than that, talking and hanging out, which is awesome. Um, but that's, um, a time that's when I think of what I would invite a new student to for the very first time, I think of youth group Mm. because it's, it's not intimidating. Like maybe coming to a church building on a Sunday morning is, you know, it's darker outside. Um, not the whole church isn't lit up and full, you know, it's kind of our space to, to be there and to talk and to, um, to interact with God in that way. Um, Additionally, for high school, we have on Sunday mornings, we do have a high school class. Um, that one's tricky, though, because it meets every other month. Okay. Um, and it's not just because we want to make things difficult for parents, um, but it's because in our vision of the youth being the church now, we want the youth to be able to participate in main service. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, we'll have one month where they're in service and they're part of that sermon series and they're with their parents. And then the next month, they have their own space to dive deeper into the Bible um, and, and get some scripture um, with each other. Um, every Sunday, both services, we have middle school class. Um, again, that's another conversational type group that meets in the morning. Um, all of these are led by wonderful volunteers mm-hmm. that have a heart for leading students to Christ. Um, and that that middle school class is, is, both of those middle school classes are great. Um, and that's seventh and eighth grade? That's seventh and eighth grade, yep. yep. And then additionally for middle school, kind of their version of youth group, we have middle school connect and that's on Wednesday nights at six, at six to seven. Um, and that's similar to youth group in the sense that it's a little more relaxed. We got a game, there's snacks involved. Um, and that's, um, that's for the middle schoolers. And then at different times throughout the year, we'll have different groups for the high schools. We'll have an abide group program, which is kind of our small group. Mm -hmm. And those are held at people's houses. Um, and then over the summer, and this is probably my favorite thing that we do, is the um, weeknight hangouts. Usually it's on Tuesdays. But we go to different people's houses, and sometimes the, they have pools, sometimes they have backyards or campfires or whatever. Um, and those are just really times to hang out, get to know each other. We typically do some maybe more difficult or current topics. Like we've in, in the past, we've talked about dating, or we talk about gender roles, things that are going on in mm-hmm. culture. Um, and I, I love those. It's it's such a great cool. time. You know, we stay, it's dark outside by the time we're done because it, it's the summer, but it's warm. So you're outside. Oh, I just, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited for that. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks for giving us a peek into the youth ministry a little bit and the purpose and the intention behind it mm-hmm. and what role it plays in the greater body here at Norwood Christian Church. Um, reach out to Jonathan if you have any questions. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have a... a son, daughter, maybe a grandchild, maybe you're interested in volunteering in one of those positions. Uh, so reach out to, to Jonathan through the Norm Christian Church website, and he'll, he'll get back to you. Thank you again for listening to the podcast. We'd love for you to rate this. Uh, if you feel so led, just get us on that, that track so others can hear about it and see it uh, through whatever ever way you're listening to it today. But thanks again for listening and joining us. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. 
And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 